Ee, YouTube'da bir açtım. Unutacaksın sen baksana bir YouTube'da nasıl. <gülüyor> Çıldım. Şu an gayet iyi. Görüntü evet. falan geliyor mu? Görüntü iyi. Bende gelmiyor da. Bende geliyorsa geliyor o zaman. Bu benim diğer bilgisayarda yapıyoruz. Domanım e, YouTube'da bir o kadar işlem açtı. Düştü değil. Unutacaksın sen baksana bir YouTube'da nasıl. Çok ekran açtım. Çıldım ben. Ben başka ben de şu an gayet. Kanka şu pencereyi kapatayım geliyorum ben de. Tamam ben de o sırada bir intro yapayım. Ee, Birinci ben görürüz yine. Ee, hello all. And this is our fourth uh, stream about uh, reinforcement learning concepts. Today we are going to talk about multi-agent um, problem and algorithms to solve that problem and how to de- design your choices and what algorithms there are to look and uh, the challenges of the multi-agent design. Uh, we will also accept questions from YouTube chat as well as our group. And I'm letting back Jan and to continue. And... Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Berk Jan. Uh, I'm a second year master student, and I have been interested in, especially in multi-agent reinforcement learning for almost six months. I am also a, a kind of beginner, but uh, today I will try to share my own experiences and the literature review. So far, I'll enjoy with you. Uh, this is the outline of the presentation. I assume that most of you all know or fam- at least familiar about the reinforcement learning background. But for those who are beginner, uh, considered as beginner and uh, to fresh our memories, I will give a very quick overview of the reinforcement learning background. Then we will continue with the multi-agent, which is the main part of the presentation. Okay. Uh, reinforce, reinforcement learning is a, a, another type of learning besides the unsupervised and supervised learning. Uh, it's a trial and error-based learning. In here, we have an agent and environment, and our agent takes takes an actions to interact with an with environment by taking actions and gets states and rewards in re- response to those actions. Uh, actions of the agent is selected by the pol- selected by the agent based on the policy, uh, which is which policy is just a function of uh, it's just a function that maps the state to a certain action, and our agent goal is to maximize its own reward. And here we formalize the reinforcement learning uh, problems uh, by using the Markov decision pro- pro- process (MDPs). Here you see a basic example of the Markov decision process. The circles represents the states, and the arrows represents the actions. And you can see the rewards are as well. Uh, the important thing here to note that is to Markovian property. When we design the reinforcement learning problems, reinforcement learning algorithms, uh, our MDP models should fulfill the Markovian property. What is Markovian property? Uh, this property states that our next state uh, only depends on the current cu- our current state, which is and uh, which is independent from our history. And we will uh, come back to Markovian property in multi-agent uh, reinforcement learning part as well again. And uh, for the categorizing the reinforcement learning methods, there are two methods basically model based and model free method in model based methods we know the transition probability and rewards and we can use dynamic programming directly here and model free methods we don't know the uh, transition probabilities and the next rewards which is more more realistic and here we can use we can divide the model free methods to value based and policy methods as well Okay, that's enough for the background. Let's go. Let's continue with multi-agent reinforcement learning. Uh, first of all, let's define the multi-agent systems. Multi-agent systems are a systems of uh, on autonomous and interacting entities that share the common and common environment. And these systems are able to solve complex tasks with either cooperation or competition. 
And these uh, systems can find many use cases in vari variety of domains, such as robotics, telecommunications, economics, control systems, etc. So why do we need learning in these systems? Because since these systems can be quite complex, prior algorithm designs for multi-agent systems can be difficult or maybe even impossible for some cases, or the agents itself uh, can find better behaviors rather than designed algor algorithm. And another uh, thing is that uh, environment in multi-agent systems can be dynamic. And therefore, the strict behaviors, designed behaviors may be inappropriate. Uh, we may need evolving algorithms. Therefore, we need learning in this type of systems. Uh, what are the benefits of multi-agent reinforcement learning? Why do we need it? Because a single agent may not cope with some real-world problems. For some real-world systems, uh, they, may, they may include lots of agents. And single agent approach may not be real, realistic from the system perspective. Of course, single age, for, for, with the single agent reinforcement learning, we can teach our agent how to behave in, an, in a community. But from the system perspective, to, to be able to design a better system, we need uh, multi-agent reinforcement learning rather than single agent. And in multi-agent reinforcement learning, uh, it, it, with with this, it can uh, increase the uh, speed of learning because in a community, uh, non-skilled agents may mimic the skilled agents' behaviors, or the skilled agent may teach the non-skilled agent to to how to behave. And uh, and and I think most important thing here is that we can design more robust systems in case because in case of failure, one or more agents. Other agents can learn how uh, to take over the responsibilities of the failed agents. Before going into to challenges of the uh, multi-agent reinforcement learning, I want to mention about how to design the multi-agent reinforcement learning problems. And uh, I think here it should be noted that the game theory and the game theoretical concepts are very much related to multi-agent reinforcement learning. And it is, they are very useful to uh, design these kind of algorithms. But uh, the, the game theory is out of the scope of this presentation. I personally suggest you to uh, at least be familiar about the, about the game theory. And because we model these uh, uh, multi reinforcement learning problems uh, with games. And the as as we mentioned, uh, the we modeled uh, single agent reinforcement learning uh, problems by MDP, and the generalization of MDP to uh, multi agent domain is the stochastic, which can be also be called Markov game, and uh, n shows the number of agent as is the finite set of environment states. AI is the set of action space where AI action is the action of agent I. Rho is the transition probability. As you can see, the rho is also is a function of the state and the action of the all agents, which is joint action. And Ri is the individual payoff functions. Ri is a function of the joint action, which is also which also includes the other actions, other agents' actions rather than the uh, intended agents. Uh, this and um, uh, here, in this type of game, all aim of the all agents try to find their optimal policies to maximize their own expected long-term average rewards. And uh, the set of the op all optimal policies of this game, from pi one to pi n, is known to be to equilibrium of this of this game. And uh, if there is a finite number of the players and the set of the states and actions are finite, then the Markov game has always a mesh equilibrium under a finite number of states. states. And the same is true for the Markov games with infinite states, but the total payoff of the agent is the discounted sum now. Okay, this is... Uh, and uh, 
There are three types of game defined in the literature for the Markov games. Fully cooperative, fully competitive, and mixed games. In fully cooperative games, the reward functions of all agents are same. Therefore, the, the rewards of the all agents are same. The, all agents will get the same reward. In fully competitive games, the agents compete with each other to maximize their own returns. You can think this as a football game. In, a, in, in football, a goal is a, re, is a reward for one team, whereas it's, it's also a penalty for the opponent team. And mixed games, they are neither competitive nor cooperative. There are no constraints imposed on the uh, reward functions of the agents. Okay, this, this uh, uh, concludes to how to model the multi-agent reinforcement learning. Uh, now let's go into details of the, what are the challenges in multi-agent reinforcement learning. The main challenge is to define the appropriate formal goal for the multi-agent system. Because as long as we define a good goal or uh, clear goal for, this, for our agents, it is better because they will, they, now they will know uh, which direction they should go. Uh, and this is an important issue to, uh, in, in first. And these are the uh, challenges listed. And I will mention the, the, about them now. First challenge is the curse of dimensionality. Uh, this challenge also exists in single agent reinforcement learning and also in, inherited to the multi agent uh, reinforcement learning domain. And this uh, challenge is caused due to exponential growth of, of state action space. And But the effect of this curse of dimensionality is more severe in multi agent domain. Because now, as you see in the model, model slide, uh, our joint action space includes the all actions of the agents. Therefore, each agent adds its own variables to joint action. Therefore, uh, the, the effect of uh, the curve dimensionality problem is more severe. And uh, for, to, to overcome this problem, uh, we need to provide a compact representation. And it is also important for the scalability to a larger number of agents in the system. And the specifying a learning goal also is important because the rewards are co correlated. Agent rewards of agents are correlated and cannot be maximized independently, unfortunately. And in the literature, there are three types of uh, goal defined. First one is stability, adaptability, and the both. Uh, as the name refers, stability ensures that uh, agents con con converge to uh, a stable policy. And adaptability ensures that performance of one agent should be at least maintained as the other agent's policies change because all agents are learning sim simultaneously and uh, our one agent's performance at should at least be maintained while the other agents are learning. And, but the best is to provide the certain amount of ability for both of these goals. Okay, the other uh, challenge is non-stationarity. I think, I personally think that this is the most important challenge to think about while designing a multi-agent. Because um, uh, in single agent RL, agent is only concerning outcome of its own actions. But in multi-agent domain, agent's reward also depends on the other agent's behaviors. This challenge arises because all agents in the systems are learning simultaneously. Therefore, each agent faced with a moving target learning problem. And uh, since all agents interact with each other, each interaction reshapes the environment, and this leads to non-stationarity of the environment. Uh, long story short, the, the best policy of one agent can change as the other po agent's policies change, which, which means good policy may not remain in the future. And the convergence is not guaranteed as in Q-learning, because now, as we mentioned, the Markovian property was important for us. But now, the Marco due to non-stationarity, Markovian property is violated, because now our 
next stage not only depends on the current stage, but also it also but also depends on the actions of the others. And uh, independent queue learning, which will I which I will explain later on, or experience replay based DQN, DQN were not designed for non stationary environment. Their performance is not efficient as. Solutions in literature to deal with this problem. I will not go into details of these algorithms in this presentation, but you can check those from the references. At the end, I will share the reference list of these. Uh, but mainly, these these solutions are uh, variants of the DQN. Each researcher have add, ha added some different features to DQN to deal with the non-stationarity or to decrease the effect of the non-stationarity. Uh, you can check those uh, works uh, if you want later on. And uh, another challenge is partial observability. Uh, in in real world scenarios, it is most likely that the agents are only aware of its own obs their own observation, and the complete complete information of the states related to environment is not known to the agents when they interact with, in with the environment. Uh, in these situations, agents observe partial information about the environment, and agents need, need has to select the best action under these circumstances circumstances. Uh, we can model this uh, kind of uh, environments uh, by using the partial observable MDPs, which is an extension of the regular MDPs. In addition to regular MDPs, here we have two variables, which are, which are observation space, O, and the observation of individual age. Link is much more challenging in partial observable environment. To deal with this issue, the researchers proposed a curriculum learning, which is also used for other uh, domains, other uh, parts of other uh, parts of learning. Uh, the curriculum principle is to start to learning to complete simple tasks first. Uh, before proceeding to complicated tasks. But in multi-agent uh, domain, uh, we can uh, modify this uh, to, uh, to start with fewer agents initially, then uh, extend the, or increase the number of, lay, number of agents in the systems later on. But the, 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 the idea is to train with fewer agents first. There are also uh, these are deep recurrent queue network. This is an extension. This is the uh, for single agent case, but uh, the extension of this work is the deep distributed recurrent queue network. Uh, unlike DQN, deep recur recurrent queue network approximates queue function of observation and the state action instead of queue function of state and action. And in the extension of deep distributed version of this, uh, there are in which, uh, last actions, weight sharing among agents, and dis disabling experience replay. replay. Uh, Inter-agent weight sharing means that all agents use weights of only one network, which is learned during the training process. And uh, as the name refers to disabling experience replace exclusive replay, replay memory feature of DQN. Uh, although each agent has different observation and hidden state, this approach, however, assumes that uh, agents have the same set of actions. In a system of heterogeneous agents, inter agents weight sharing cannot be applied because each agent now may have different set of actions. You, may, you can think uh, like this like this. Uh, in a system, we, we may have UAVs and the ground vehicles. And in these systems, 
uh, the action space of the UAVs and the grounds vehicles will be different. Therefore, we cannot uh, apply the weight sharing for these kind of systems. Uh, this uh, work only uh, works for the homogeneous system. And there is another work, Deep Recurrent Policy Inference Q, Q Network. Uh, there is also reference numbers uh, here, uh, which you can also look at it. Uh, another challenge is to multi-agent systems training schemes. Uh, there are different uh, approaches for this. First of all, first of all, the, the uh, independent learners, which is a direct extension of the single agent. Here, the agent thinks the other agents are part of the environment, uh, which is different from our uh, Markovian game model. Uh, here, the uh, agent is do not consider the behavior uh, of the other or the actions of the other agents uh, but uh, as far as i have seen uh, as far as i see this idea also can be, can be useful for some type of applications and uh, especially i see i look at the applications of this in telecommunication area and uh, there are this idea may provide uh, good results but uh, there's also discussions that in in some survey papers the researchers state that this idea is vulnerable to overfitting uh, computationally expensive but as i said uh, it is uh, much more sim simple to design uh, with following this ap approach but the popular way in uh, multi-agent uh, training is the centralized learning and decentralized execution. Uh, decentralized learning of uh, decentralized policies has become a standard paradigm in multi-agent settings because the learning process may happen in a simul simulator and a, or a laboratory where there are no communication constraints and extra information is available. And therefore, this is a very useful uh, uh, approach. And in, in one uh, paper, uh, they, the researchers proposed three types of scheme. Uh, first one is centralized. Uh, in this type of uh, scheme, all a uh, environment gets gets the joint action and uh, all agents uh, got the joint observation. Whereas in con concurrent uh, scheme, uh, agents are trained simultaneously uh, based on their private observation, but they got the joint reward at the end. And parameter sharing is the last type of this proposed scheme. Uh, it's mainly based on the training, the simultaneous training agents simultaneously by exploiting the other agents' experience, experiences. And the last challenge is the continuous action space. As you know, the can solves the high dimension state problem, but in real world, uh, and the uh, can only deal with the discrete action. And discrete and low ideal world scenario, uh, we may have a continuous action space. Therefore, in a multi, uh, not only in multi agent domain, but also in a uh, single agent domain, we have to deal with the continuous action space. Therefore, the proposed solutions are the main solution is to discretize our, our continuous action space. Uh, to some levels, or then we can uh, use the DQN again. And also we can use policy gradient methods. As you know, deep, there are deep deterministic policy gradient methods are proposed for dealing to continuous uh, action space. But the important thing here that, that uh, I highly suggest to look at these papers, paper 12, this is an extension of deep deterministic policy gradient to multi-agent scenario. Uh, this is a 
research paper proposed by the researchers from the OpenAI, Berkeley and University of McGill, as far as I remember. Uh, I believe this, uh, and in this pa in that paper, the researchers also used the centralized learning and the decentralized execution uh, approach. And there is another solution, which is uh, I don't know, but I ha I have seen the when I read the, the survey paper, which is trust region policy optimization. Uh, which is also can be used for dealing the continuous action space. And this summary, uh, the the table I took this table from the reference that I have written uh, uh, the uh, bottom of this the slide. And you can go to that paper and uh, check the reference number based on the uh, the problem you are working on, but because the algorithm you are going to select, will, which uh, will be, uh, which should be selected based on the challenge, challenges you have in your your problem. Therefore, it is important to select and to, it is important to classify those algorithms. And you can uh, go to that reference too and check the other references as well. But as you can see from the uh, table. There are lots of uh, proposed work to deal with these challenges. Um, thanks for listening to me. Uh, I I try to share my experiences. If you have questions, please ask. I will try to answer if I know. Otherwise, we can have a brainstorming together. Thank you, Dr. Chan. Uh, actually, it was a great presentation. Uh, we have two questions. Uh, one of them from Marve. Uh, she asked about how does the calculation of reward take place. Uh, it's more application specific, but I think uh, she would like to uh, ask about uh, we will cal calculate the reward uh, for each agent or just a total reward for uh, every agent? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I think it also depends on the approach you choose. For, for example, for the independent learner's approach, uh, you have to give an individual reward to each agent. But uh, I mean, uh, for example, uh, uh, fully cooperative games, in that games, we have agents, but those agents are trying to build, build a, a main system. Therefore, the performance of the system will be, will decide the reward of the all agents. Therefore, I think it's also de it is, it depends on the. Uh, for example, uh, if we think about the communication perspective, if we try to design a, a communication system, therefore, uh, uh, for example, uh, in this case, the reward might be the total throughput of the network systems but uh, you can also you can uh, focus on re individual throughputs rather than the system uh, throughput uh, yeah that depends on the application you are working on i think We have another question from that. Uh, I couldn't hear you. It's, as I understand, it's a design issue. Yes, yeah. I think I believe yes. And design uh, issue and the the, the the model you pick up. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have another question from back. Uh, he said, uh, "Does it apply circulum learning to agents?" I think you have to read that. Uh, a bit long. Uh, I can read it if you want. Okay. If you can't. It says, uh, does circular learning to agents simultaneously or independently according to iterations? I think uh -huh. there's a mistake. And some agents couldn't complete uh, tasks, simple tasks. I think it talks about the circular learning. Uh, does it apply curriculum learning to agents simultaneously? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
Actually, if you don't understand the question, we can ask I'm, again. I, to be honest, I don't fully understand, but uh, I just mentioned the curriculum learning. I'm not familiar to curriculum learning, but uh, I just um, mentioned to, to curriculum learning uh, to it is just a tool to make we uh, the the researchers uh, inspired from the other uh, models uh, in curriculum learning. Uh, as far as I know, uh, first the agents are trained for simple tasks, then they are continue to compli com complicated tasks. But in multi-agent domain, uh, the idea is to rather than uh, the compli compli uh, the the um, complexity of the problem, the um, uh, problem is the number of the agents. Uh, because the training with uh, the higher number of agents might be hard at in initially. Therefore, the idea is to just start with the smaller number of agents, therefore, to increase the um, number of agents, if I understand the uh, question correctly. But let's check again. Uh, I also have another question, maybe. If you... Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I want to ask about uh, this uh, competitive, cooperative and mixed part. And my question is, uh, what happens if you have a system that, like me, like a real system, which com uh, contains a comparative part, cooperative parts, like simultaneously, some agents are cooperating each other. But also they are like a football player, the team, mm -hmm. and there are multiple agents. Uh, the, each agents in your team are cooperating, yes. and they are, they are also uh, competing are against the other team. Mm -hmm. So yes. in those systems, do you like separate them like fully, yes. like they don't know each other, or they are separate systems? Yes, I, I understand your question. Uh, especially, I have seen that kind of application in the the paper I have uh, gave reference in multi-agent uh, deep deterministic policy gradient, which is uh, the reference number twelve. Uh, they have used uh, multiple particle environments. Maybe you know that. In, yeah. Uh, in one of those environments. As far as I know, simple spread, spread environment. Uh, that one, there are some enemies and the uh, the the defenders. The defenders' goal uh, is to defend some area, to block the enemies to pass to to that area. In that case, uh, as far as I understand, the each team, I, I mean uh, teams works in a in a cooperative manner as a team but uh, they are uh, com as it um, within a team they are comp cooperating with each other but uh, for team from team perspective they are competing with each other there are uh, some applications about that uh, you can check but i i have not detail i have not Yes, in this type of systems, because uh, one agent uh, in a team can take over the the responsibilities of the uh, other ones. Therefore, they are co cooperating within a team, but they are competing competing with other team. Th thank you, thank you for okay, thank you. Uh, I have a, I have a question, but. Uh... Does my voice uh, sound okay? Yes, I think I hear <laughs> Okay. So, uh, I have a question from the optimization part. Uh, there are several optimization problems uh, that can include two optimization problem in a one optimization problem. And uh, I think uh, they can uh, be handled uh, with multi-agent RL. 
uh, like uh, scheduling problem with uh, pet planning. It's a, mm-hmm. uh, I think, a real world problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think about these problems and uh, is there any automatic way to deal uh, or uh, uh, formalize the problem with uh, multi-agent RL? What do you think about that? I think multi-agent RL can be quite hard sometimes based on the problem you're working on. Yes, I have seen some uh, applications, as you mentioned, such as uh, uh, trajectory management or resource management. Uh, these kind of uh, applications, in, in this kind of application, multi-agent RL can be used, but uh, I mean, yeah, I it, it's actually an open question. Yeah, in, in uh, size also. Yeah, uh, it's also a very uh, fresh topic I have, as I see right now, because the paper that I have shared, uh, maybe you can see from the reference page, it's a very, very fresh papers. And they are not the 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 oldest paper I have used so far, to, which is which belongs to two thousand nine. Therefore, the domain is quite new, and the the research directions are still quite open. Uh, whether the multi-agent reinforcement learning can really help us or not, because as you see. And uh, as I said, it's multi-agent reinforcement learning is kind of interdisciplinary area as well. It's, it's very game theory is very much related, and yes, in yeah, th- th- this is the research direction I think. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, there is a problem, and I think it's uh, the problem is uh, we always uh, take as an. Uh, single agent problem mm-hmm. as optimization problems and uh, because this is a, a, a easy way to deal with that yes. but uh, actual uh, answer uh, to this optimization problems is in uh, multi agent but uh, for researchers i think this is a very hard topic to uh, yeah. deal with and i don't know as as you said uh, the researchers uh, will uh, move this area as uh, I guess. Yes. So example, thank you for your presentation. I will uh, search about that uh, yes. a bit. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still working on these uh, topics. And as I said, I'm also can be can be considered as a beginner because it has been also it has been only six months I have started this topic. I hope I can answer your questions. But uh, this is also very new area in uh, with the involvement yeah. of deep reinforcement learning uh, of course there are lots of other algorithms uh, for, before 2010 uh, but uh, with the involvement of deep reinforcement learning i think the multi agent reinforcement uh, the the uh, the attention or the the popularity of the multi agent reinforcement learning also has been increased has been uh, with, increased afterwards yeah yeah of course actually but, i have one question for you uh, for uh, special one area more thing, one more thing before, ah, okay uh, and uh, as you see i mentioned the independent learners which most education related papers uh, can take this kind of approach as a basis because uh, it is much more simple to design a Markov game because and uh, you are kind of uh, uh, neglect the uh, non-stationarity, uh, but uh, I don't know whether they are whether they would be realistic or not. But the researchers also use this this independent learners approach because that it it is a uh, simple much more simple to deal with non extension to all the Marco game models. Yeah, sure. Actually, uh, my question is about your uh, research topic in communication part. Hmm. Uh, 
I, okay. I wonder from Marvel's question, okay. uh, you take your reward like uh, communication time, like uh, you have a message and a response time, and it can be your reward. Uh, I, first of all, let me try to what I'm trying to do. Okay, uh, okay, thank you. In my thesis, I, I'm trying to solve a dynamic uh, topology optimization formation topology formation problem uh, for the airborne network uh, for aircraft. Uh, the, the internet co connectivity uh, for the passengers in, uh, can be provided via satellite links or the, uh, ground to air to ground links, but for the areas where the ground infrastructure is not possible to deploy, for example, over the oceans, uh, you the, you cannot provide air-to-ground air connectivity and the satellite communication uh, have some drawbacks such as the lower throughput and higher latency. Therefore, we are trying to create a multi-hop topology over the oceans that some air air uh, entity can serve the others as a uh, access point to serve the internet connected to, to, to passengers. Therefore, we are since the, the air vehicles are moving, therefore we need an, an algorithm that uh, should uh, form the topology in a decentralized manner, uh, an autonomous manner to form a link with which uh, direction I should uh, direct my antenna or form the link with which of my neighbors. And therefore, one agent, one aircraft in a system should select uh, the, its neighbor. Yeah, there, it's, it's a kind of uh, network formation problem. Dynamic. Actually, it's a really good problem to work on, and I will. Uh, I'm waiting your paper. <laughs> I hope, <laughs> and uh, as you mentioned, it is. Yeah, I think the the, the designing a state space, action space, uh, the these are the important uh, parameters to select, uh, because uh, as long as you provi provide a clear and compact representation. Yes, I think uh, it will be uh, helpful and useful. Yeah, in IL, it's uh, application specific uh, uh, for sorry. many years. Yeah, we have uh, one question. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask that, but uh, he, it's mostly answered. But I'm going to repeat and if you have anything to add. He said uh, some uh, OERT named username and asked for cooperative agents beside gaming app scenarios scenarios but you already i believe mentioned uh, other type of like work but of if course, you have anything to add uh, really cooperative agents um, besides gaming uh, i mean by what do you mean by gaming scenarios real games I believe or, he mentioned or like game Oh, I believe. I mean, yes, yes, of course. I mean, as I said, as I said previously, for for example, uh, uh, in resource management problems, uh, the main idea to to increase the throughput of the all network systems or the the for I mean, uh, let's say uh, for for example. In trajectory, uh, it depends on the what is your goal, and of course it can. The uh, the idea is to to build a system together with the agents, multi agents, to form a big system. And the per if you uh, mostly consider the performance of the main system rather than rather than the the performance of the individuals, then you you need a fully cooperative game i think as i as i know yeah, let's say yeah, actually i have one question also uh, what about the generalization capability of a uh, multi-agent it, it's uh, a, it can be competitive for a uh, single rl or uh, it's a new in 
the area you can uh, we can take a general uh, knowledge in the multi agent IL or, or it's just a new what do you mean by the generalization uh, like uh, as I mentioned in uh, standard optimization probably we can, we can uh, solve that with a basic search but or uh, with any uh, materialistic search like that but if we have a generalization capability in RL uh, we can uh, take answers to this optimization problem like uh, with uh, one complexity yeah, yeah. Uh, is it is it true for uh, multi-agent also I wonder that what is the generalization capability of the multi-agent setting mm, actually I don't know that I haven't think about that but uh, as 